<laughs> All right, I am back with uh, a God of War video. I um, decided to record this, I guess, in character as battle scarred Kratos. Um, those of you who missed it on Twitter, I was in the hospital recently where uh, it's complicated, but like essentially what it comes down to is too dehydrated, change positions too quickly, blood pressure drops, I pass out. Um, this has happened a couple times, but this time I hit my face on the tile floor of the bathroom right over there. Uh, so that is why uh, I look like I just got into a bar fight, but I don't get into bar fights. So this is um, about <laughs> the extent of it. Uh, in a perfect world, I would just be playing uh, some game footage over this, except for the God of War First Impressions embargo, um, which was a couple days ago. You can't have any footage. Uh, you're only allowed to show very specific screenshots that they gave you um, for that period of time in the game. So I will just have to be kind of talking through it. Um, this this is a, a first impressions thing that is based on the article I wrote at Actual Embargo, but some people were kind of asking me where uh, the actual video was, and I figured it was, um, you know, there's not too much happening in Destiny at the moment other than Festival of the Lost Grinding, so I figured I would circle back around to this uh, ahead of a longer review, which will uh, come out later. And so this, the first impressions is, it's essentially the first four to five hours of the game. Uh, the first two main regions, which are Midgard and Svartalheim. I know I, now that I'm recording a video, I have to pronounce all of these out loud. Uh, so it's the first two kind of major regions in the game. You're not supposed to talk about some certain story things, but some stuff is okay, and I'm, I'm going to try being vague, as vague as possible, and not really get into uh, story spoilers. I, I will say, like, you kind of really should know the end of the first God of War um, to get into uh, God of War Ragnarok. Uh, there's literally a, like, catch-up video at the beginning where it'll just take you through the first game. I guess you could just start with Ragnarok. I don't really know how you'd want to, but it's possible, I suppose. Um, but we are going to... You're going to need to know some certain things, uh, which I will start talking about now. Um, the main important things to know going into this game is the discovery that uh, Atreus' giant name is Loki, and he has like, some special role uh, among the, the giants and then in this realm, and then the death of Baldur, who was uh, essentially the main villain of the first game. And his death has created sort of uh, realm instability, I guess, where something called, is it Fimble, Fimble Winter? I think it's called, where um, all the realms are kind of really screwed up. Like in Midgard, it means like it's a really, really severe, um, like ice blasty winter in other realms, like in Svartalheim, uh, it's like a more of a swampy region and the, you know, it's becoming more gaseous and dangerous and stuff. And so it, it affects the realms in different ways. It's kind of a, a way to transform the realms a bit. Um, you are not going to have like, well, this is a sequel and you are starting over from scratch, this isn't going to send you on like another long quest for uh, Kratos' you know, famed weapons. Like obviously a big part of the first God of War game was you're using the axe for so long and then eventually you get out the Blades of Chaos and what was one of the best moments from that game. Here, like the very first part, you will be using his axe only and then eventually he's, he's just, hang, he's like, just has his Blades of Chaos kind of hung up at home. Uh, and then you will be able to use those right away and you will have access to a good amount of combos and stuff and you know it's not like you can't really do anything um, once you get them right away you will have a certain amount of, of moves that you get and then kind of as you unlock and go down the tree it like amplifies those moves and then you'll unlock some new ones uh, and not having gone fully down the tree i don't know what kind of surprises remain in store for the upper upper tier levels but in this early part of the game uh, combat is certainly immediately as, as fun and satisfying as it was uh, in the last game. It is, I prefer the axe personally, I think. I don't know, I can't really pinpoint why. The uh, I do like the, the grappling aspects of the, the Blades of Chaos, but I just really like the way the axe feels, and I like the Thor's hammer aspect of, of throwing it and recalling it. That remains a very satisfying mechanic, uh, and I really enjoy that part of it. Um, one interesting thing about skills this time around is that you will level them up as you use them. So if you do like the charged heavy throw attack or something like, I don't know, 25 times or 50 times or whatever it is, it's like a little, it's like a little Skyrimish. Like you will level up that skill and then you can invest some XP to upgrade 
uh, a choice of like damage stun or like elemental buildup and like there's different options for different skills so that's kind of a cool aspect that uh, will increase your power based on your style of play like if you find yourself using one weapon or one style of, of gameplay every so often like more than others you'll be able to um, get rewarded for that or it will also encourage you to use a more diverse array of skills if you if you're uh, not really um, if you're avoiding some skills, maybe uh, you won't be able to level them up, so you might want to focus on those a little bit more. Uh, in terms of actual combat, I didn't say this in my initial written review because I wasn't like 100% sure if we could talk about it, but Sony just did a whole thing about how there was like an official Sony blog post about the Thor fight at the beginning, and while I will avoid the context of the Thor fight, uh, you do fight Thor. And <laughs> it's a very cool fight. If you if you play the Balder fight at the beginning of... Um, the uh the last the first god of war uh well first you know what i mean it is somewhat similar to that uh i would say it's less less quick timey and more like an actual boss fight with like mechanics you kind of need to learn at least a little bit um generally speaking i would say combat is less quick timey and like there's less quick time moments there are some but definitely not as many uh, as there have been in past games the thor fight is really good uh thor is freaking enormous he's like almost twice the size of Kratos. He's just like a big freaking dude. Uh, and the fight is just him like taunting you the whole time and like saying you're not the real God of War and all this stuff like that. Uh, and you will be kind of slugging it out all across uh, Midgard through the course of that because obviously Thor's hammer can launch him places and launch you places and stuff like that. Um, I don't think it's a spoiler to say you're not gonna kill Thor in the beginning of this fight. Uh, you're not just like murdering, you know, one of the main new characters immediately, similar to what happened with Baldur. Uh, so, we, but we do get some scenes with Thor and Odin and Kratos and Atreus, and again, without context, very, very impressed by uh, both Thor and Odin as new characters. Um, Thor is vo voiced by Ryan Hurst, who you may know from Sons of Anarchy as Opie. More recently, he was Beta in The Walking Dead. Uh, and then Odin is, oh, frick, I can't remember his name. He's he's the guy from, he's in the West Wing. He's the guy with the goatee who's bald from the West Wing. And you'll know his voice immediately. Uh, I just can't think of his name off the top of my head. And, like, it's, a, it's an interesting version of Odin where, like, he's not, like, some brawling, strapping dude himself. Like, he's kind of very methodical and very kind of conniving. And, and it, it's... It's definitely a different take. On, it's it's both a very different take on Thor and on Odin like that we've ever seen. Um, obviously, this version of Thor is not really going to be anything remotely like the Hems Chris Hemsworth MCU Thor that we've gotten to know for you know a decade or whatever it's been now. He's not like your you know funny jokey blonde handsome hero dude. Like that's just not what this version of Thor is. This one is supposed to be a lot closer to uh, the mythology itself and um, kind of rely on the Norse stories of him, not just like who's gonna make a good superhero, <laughs> which is obviously the Marvel version. Uh, really looking forward you know, to, to more from those as, as the game goes on. Uh, in terms of the actual kind of, uh, as the game progresses here, you will go from Midgard, Midgard to Svartalheim, and your goal there is to find Tyr, the uh, Norse god of war who is being imprisoned by Odin somewhere uh, in this dwarven realm, and you will kind of go to a dwarven city, uh, fight a bunch of swamp-based monsters, kind of, and then you'll find Tyr. I've only, in this part, there's you only get like a little bit of voice acting from Tyr, um, and we've, you know, I, I know you've seen some stuff of Tyr in the trailers, but like this imprisoned kind of, I don't want to say castrated, but like kind of, uh, version of Tyr is like kind of the polar opposite of Kratos in many ways, is like Kratos is the god of war, uh, for the Greek pantheon now, based on the events of the past games, where his tier is like essentially like a fallen god of war um, that is in pretty rough shape uh, when you meet him. Um, this time around, it, it's kind of Atreus leading everything. Like before, it was like Kratos on a quest to, you know, spread his wife's ashes, and Atreus is kind of tagging along for the ride. This time, it is Atreus who is trying to find out the greater meaning um, behind his own identity and like what being Loki means. And then all of this is centered around the idea of Ragnarok happening, Ragnarok being the great catastrophic event of this realm, which is a giant war and like every, like not everyone, but like a lot of people are going to die. And like, how can we avoid this? Is it inevitable? Like stuff like that. So it'll get more and more complicated as time goes on, but that's kind of the, the gist of it here. 
uh, in terms of other gameplay things. One thing I mentioned in my early preview before was that the game could start to feel maybe a little claustrophobic at times where like I, I know this is the format of the game where you go to these like kind of smaller instance areas and then it's like you're in this room you got to solve a puzzle to get to the next zone using some combination of your tools and abilities uh, and stuff like that it's just there aren't that many games like this anymore so it just feels a little strange to constantly be kind of herded into these very very linear like hallways and like very you know um con constricted rooms where it's like beat a handful of enemies and then solve this like weighted pulley puzzle or whatever with your your freeze axe and pulling things with blades of chaos and to the point where like sometimes it's like okay here's like uh wooden scaffolding leading up there but like you can't just climb it or you can't jump the 12 feet up there even though you're a immortal god of power like <laughs> you got to solve the exact puzzle thing and like some rooms this works if it's like a, an obstacle you really can't get past sometimes it just feels a little goofy where it's like okay kratos i think you can jump this you know tiny little gap here and you don't need to solve some puzzle for it um so far there's not really a ton of like in, in this part like open segments and so it does feel maybe a little claustrophobic uh, as time goes on, we'll see if kind of um, that changes. But it, that's just something that kind of struck me in, the, in this first part here. And I know it is very similar to the last game, which I loved. It's just, I don't know, four years later, we just don't really see that many games like this. And like other games in this genre, they're kind of a lot more sprawling. Like you have Horizon Forbidden West, where it's this huge open world of exploration. And then you go into these individual dungeons, which are maybe more linear and full of puzzles. But it doesn't feel quite as on the rails and constricted. That said, I really do, I enjoy the puzzles, I really enjoy the combat. The combat is still absolutely top-notch, and if you loved it in the last game, you're going to love it in this game. Um, there are already hints in this section about how it will evolve, like uh, Atreus has a kind of small skill tree at the start, and you will, there's a lot of blank space to fill out there. Um, uh, just even in like early armor drops and stuff, you can see that there are going to be kind of um, interesting builds you can make for Kratos kind of above and beyond what we had in the last game, probably. Uh, and then um, it's just, <laughs> the mechanics are just so good. Both Blades of Chaos and the, the Throwing Axe are, are a lot of fun. And in terms of like the reuse of stuff, sure, like you're going to reuse some animations. Like I, the, the classic Kratos gets in the boat the same way animation is like, but like, what are you, what are you going to do here? Like, it was such a leap from the the last God of War games, like the main trilogy and some of the sub games, to go to the over the shoulder, you know, totally transformed version of God of War that we just got. That like going from that to its sequel, you're never gonna see that major of a leap again. Like, why would you ever expect to see another leap of that size going forward? So, I think as long as you know the game has substantive content, I know people were worried about it being quote DLC uh, or whatever, but if it has substantive content, if it has a great story, if it is still fun to play, like if the environment and writing and characters are still good, don't care. You can reuse some animations and some, zone, like whatever, it's, it's not a big deal. So I don't really see that uh, critique of it. Um, I think I'm probably bumping up against the limit of what I can talk about here in these early sections um, and these early hours here. Uh, I will definitely have more. I'm still not done with it. <laughs> so uh, I had a little bit of a detour being in the hospital for like 48 hours, but um I will have more thoughts on it, more complete thoughts, obviously uh, closer to release here, but I did want to kind of um, condense my early thoughts for the preview in video form here. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon. Take care. And yes, I'm drinking water. I know everyone wants me to drink water. <laughs> I'm drinking water. See, this is my, this is my water. I'm drinking water. So thanks for all your concern. I appreciate it. All right, talk to you soon.